Just before we dive into today's video, I wanted to say this is number three of a three-part series. So if you missed one and two, I would suggest going back and watching those because otherwise you will be missing out on a lot of important details from our personal story, but also a lot of New Zealand. And you also won't understand why I'm soaking wet. Woo! I am very wet. I feel like this was a proper test of stuff we have and it just really told me that it is not adequate for New Zealand. Ah, we haven't had a chance to go shopping really and then you kind of think, do I really need to buy like special shoes? How often will I really use them? But we're going to be hiking around here and it's going to rain. These boots are not going to cut it. Okay. Clearly the uh, leak zone in my rain pants. I don't know why. It could have been from my pockets getting in and out because I did put the camera in there. This is going to be interesting. Oh, I felt like there was a lot of water in my socks. So let's see here. Oh. <laughs> Yum. Woo. That's just the toes. Oh. Okay. Go find a lunch spot maybe. Campground. Somewhere to uh, light a fire dryer stuff. <laughs> I'm Nikki, this is Jason, and this is our floating home curiosity. But in celebration of our 15th wedding anniversary, we're temporarily trading in our keels goodbye to curiosity for wheels. And hello, road trip. Because that's how our adventure together started 15 years ago. Now this road trip is gonna be a twofer because as we make our way around the Twin Coast Highway of New Zealand, with its dramatic coastlines, ancient forests, and cascading waterfalls, we're also taking a trip down memory lane. A byway of our journey together. The story of us, from the time we said, I do, and became legal guardians to a 15-year-old, that was a steep road, to the years we spent living on the road and eventually buying a boat without a lick of experience and sailing it halfway around the world to New Zealand. So yeah, here we go. We're taking it real slow. We had a local go, whoa, whoa, boss. Take it easy down there. You definitely don't want to try and cross the river. We don't know where the river is. So we're going slow to make sure we don't get stuck in the river. Yeah. We're on the way to the sand dunes, by the way. Oh, yeah. Ha! Ha. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't think I would have tried to cross that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow, oh, that's yeah. Funny. So normally this river right here is like super shallow, just a meandering little bit of water that you walk over and then you go up to the sand dunes and then you hike all the way to the top and you slide down on boards. I don't think we're gonna get across that river. Definitely not by car and probably not gonna risk it by foot either. We're the only ones here. I don't, uh, doesn't seem like a good idea to get stuck in that quick sandy sort of river action. Just seems like a bad idea. So we enjoy it from here. We'll come back, we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back. It'll be fine. We'll get to see it. Well, we were gonna go do some sandboarding. We even borrowed these from a couple of friends. Thank you, Karen and Russ. Doesn't look like we're gonna get to use them, unfortunately, because of this weather. So it will work really well as a sock drying rack for now. Camping spot, freedom camping, that's what they call it. And 
and it looks like it's concrete. I was worried it might be grass, but it looks like concrete, so we can definitely stay here tonight. We've shared a lot with you at this point from our very first unofficial date to buying a house before we were even of legal drinking age, road tripping for our wedding, and of course, raising my teenage sister. And at that point, we had graduated her from homeschool mm -hmm. and she was out living on her own, doing pretty well for an 18 year old. Yep. And we had this sense of freedom for the first time in, well, a long time. <laughs> And we kind of felt like we were at, a, I guess, a little bit of a crossroads, yeah. but more than anything, just thinking back to all of a sudden, like, let's go on that gap year that we wanted to go on four years ago. But we are 28, so we're at this prime working age where we're supposed to be working and saving money. So Being adults. Yeah, exactly. And our yeah. gap year went from South America or surf bums to, well, yeah. let's travel around North America and find a new place to live. Because we know we didn't want to live in Dallas for the rest of our lives. We just didn't know where we wanted to go. So that's kind of what led us down the path of buying an RV. And this is 2009, yes. mind you. And RVs at that time were... were cool. No, and they weren't just ugly. They, they were, were fuckly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real, no. not our style. But in 2009, they had just launched this new one that's supposed to have European styling and be mm -hmm. more fuel efficient. And it wasn't outrageously priced. So we kind of got sucked into that one. Unfortunately, that RV turned out to be a complete lemon. It was so bad and broke down so often, we dubbed it the rolling turd. <laughs> yeah, it was in the shop probably three quarters of the year that we owned it. But fortunately, yeah. But fortunately, Texas has a really strong lemon law mm -hmm. and we were able to get the manufacturer to buy it back. But through that entire process, they made us sign an NDA. So we can't talk about it. More than we already have. <laughs> it's the coldest hand to run down this land where the ocean lands. Um. <clears throat> Oh, Look. bed princess is out of coffee. It's too cold to get out of bed. It is. Uh, also, there's not enough room. Yeah. <laughs> There's one thing about van life. There is not a lot of room. I don't know how those guys do it. I guess it's different when you have your own van. Yeah. We always did fine in our little camper. Yeah. I think you just get used to your own space. Ah, yeah. oh, thank you very much. Warm those hands up. <gasps> See, gentlemen, the key to a long-lasting relationship is dishes and coffee and making sure that your partner never has to do them and kisses and kisses <laughs> <laughs> well, don't spill the coffee <laughs> honey <laughs> i'll get the towel thank you <laughs> It was almost a disaster. Almost a disaster. Look, I think it, no stains. No. On your new New Zealand wool sweater. I know. Oh. That would have been terrible. We each bought two sweaters because we don't really own any. <laughs> that is the cool thing about being in New Zealand is like with all these sheep, there's wool. This is 100% New Merino. Zealand wool. Yeah, made in New Zealand. And yeah, so I think that's super cool. Okay, More coffee. <laughs> Take two kisses. <laughs>
rain, just like that. Okay, we're getting very close to the forest. And before we go, we're gonna have a little lunch. We've got some curry soup, some sourdough bread, some lovely garlic and parsley butter, yes to that, and a nice salad with a beautiful view here. This spot is, what would they say? Fit flash. Yeah. I have no idea what you're trying to say. They would say sweet as. Sweet as. This is one sweet as spot here. Check this out. It's sweet as. Oh, that stupid man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's cold on it. <laughs> You're going without your jacket? It's in the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm like, it may look fun right now. It'll rain again. So we're at the county forest and it's a DOC property, which is like their national parks. Department and, of Conservation. This is where the biggest, the largest county tree in all of New Zealand is. Pretty exciting. Yeah, their answer to the redwoods is what I read online. <laughs> Why has everybody always got to compare? Why I don't know. Why well, can't it just be the coolest, biggest tree in all of New Zealand? But that's what... It was written in. You know. Yeah. You know. Just from the little bit we've seen so far, it makes me so stoked for this. I feel like this has been the thing, even from when we started planning this road trip, that I've been the most excited about because the redwood forest is one of like my all-time favorite places and well they did say this is like their answer to the redwood so pretty freaking stoked i am too Big tree, 60 millimeter lens. Still can't even get it. This tree is called the Lord of the Forest and I read that it was 2,000 years old. So that tree has seen a lot. It's a big tree. They really go through a lot of effort and expense to make sure you stay on the track and you clean your boots and get all the dirt off because of the cowdy dieback disease. It must be super intense because every time we enter a trail, it's that whole system. Yeah, and clean, clean, inspect, clean, and signs everywhere. Yeah. Oh. It must be crazy. Yeah. You look so tiny. All that texture and color. I like the texture of the cowdy trees and I like that the tops of them are different. They look, I don't know, like not complete or something. It doesn't look like a regular tree to me. I think the base, the trunk is so 
thick and then it spreads out in this little spindly, almost fragile looking top. It's so disconnected, the top and the bottom. That I think is the most interesting part, just solid to fragile. And I guess fragile down below too, so it's a pretty cool tree. What was that? Finding our campground is not going so great. <laughs> okay, so that's a five point turn. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Is it? Oh, so okay. this is the visitor center. There's supposed to be a campground there, but it's blocked off. And there's a beautiful bridge. And then over here on our right is another thing that's like a group of a bunch of things. And they're supposed to be camping there, but we drove all the way down there and everything was closed. And it doesn't look like it's been open in quite some time. It did have a little map and it showed a lot of the, tra they call them tracks here, not yeah. really trails, but a lot of the trails were closed. The visitor center's closed. And I can't tell if that's like closed for right now or this season. COVID or... Because of like the day, I don't know. So. Hmm. Hopefully, we can find a place to camp tonight. Yeah. I'm not ready to leave the forest. No. There it's seems a, to be a theme. The sun's going down. We can see the clouds that lit up. It looks absolutely gorgeous, but the lookout's closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I also want to point out that there is no cell phone signal here, no data, so I can't call, can't look, look anything up. up. Yeah, it's just winging it. I have like the offline maps on Road Trippers and on Google, and I marked campgrounds. <laughs> but that doesn't do us a lot of good because I can't call them, and I can't uh, look for another one. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I'm not panicked yet. It's just kind of funny. DFC campground, so we could get down here and it could be closed. We should be there in about five minutes. Okay, $23 per person for a powered site or $20 per person for a non-powered site, which I think will plug in for $6 extra. Supposedly they have hot showers. There's only one other camper here, so we got the whole place to ourselves. It's party. <laughs> Make it a rager. A rager. <laughs> okay, I'll go but park. The sign says no fires, so. No fires, so we can't have a rager. No, nope. no uh, Kiwi Burning Man. <laughs> That's amore. Yes. Very important part of the cooking process, especially when it is a spaghetti night. Do you need to drink the red rum? Oh, no. I'm no. Good morning. It was quite the morning at that. We woke up to all these crazy sounds. There are just so many noises that are new here. First of all, cows sound crazy. And then there's all the birds and there's this other weird kind of screaming sound that happens at night. I don't know what creature that is yet. Anyway, it's very interesting. But it's a beautiful day, I think. There's some clouds looming off to the side, but it's supposed to be a little nicer today. So here we go. Round two of hiking in being in a beautiful forest, which is kind of the whole point of being here.
Look at that one. So this is a fallen caddy tree. As it's fallen over, the roots are exposed here behind me and it's probably 15 feet high. And that's just what's left of it. This is another tree growing out of it on top of the roots. And then there's the rest of it slowly decomposing and being taken over. So the sign says that this caddy tree is 600 years old. Go just walking the track and you come across a 1200 year old tree. I feel a little bit like Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. Makes you wonder what lives up there. Seems so far away. Those birds, that's what lives up there. I know. Oh, like, I would love to be able to climb up there and just set up camp and stay for yeah. like a week. 24 hours would be amazing, but a week. Imagine what you would see from way up there. One can dream. Now that looks like somebody fell in the mud and this is just their lower half sticking out. Look at those tree trunk legs. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it was a bit of a rough start to our nomadic lifestyle. In fact, we ended up living in four different RVs over the five year process of traveling all around North America. It was just a massive time Ooh. of learning. Cause it was this yeah. huge lifestyle shift, shift, which seems obvious, but there was just so much about it that was so drastically different. Obviously being like us and learning to live together. 24 seven without escape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> other than like going for a walk on your own or maybe to a, the grocery store by yourself. But... I wouldn't let that happen. Duck. You must stay with me all the time. No. <laughs> it was a lot of togetherness, but aside from that, it's also like our whole... Everything changed. Everything. Our jobs, how we were going to make money, how we were going to continue to travel, our friends. Our sense of community, like just everything, because your whole life is constantly moving and changing. So friendships are coming and going and learning to live more virtually, even with family. Yeah, it was all very evolutionary. And the idea of living with less, I mean, that's probably the biggest takeaway is we have absolutely enjoyed getting rid of most of our things and living as simply as possible. It's, yeah, it's tough to say because it still feels like we have a lot, but yeah. in comparison to like sticks and bricks life, as we call that, uh, it's a lot less, but there is a massive sense of freedom that also comes with that. And yeah, everybody wants to know, well, when are you going to stop? Yeah. When, when is this going to be over? And the truth is we don't know. And we've gotten sucked into this lifestyle mm -hmm. and we can't imagine living a different way. Feels like we've kind of just scratched the surface or like just gotten started, which I guess is and isn't the case. I mean, we've kind of, it's been 10 years now that we've been <laughs> nomadic. Nomadic, yeah. And it feels like still so fresh yeah. in so many ways. So I don't know. I don't, there is no end in sight, at least. For us. the foreseeable yeah. future. <laughs> we have no idea what's next, what's gonna happen, but we don't need to know either. Yeah. That's kind of the exciting Just part. go on the journey, see what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Teach my soul to sing your song Even when my eyes can't see 
When I can see we work carry it, work on. it. Yeah. I know yeah. your hand is guiding me. I know your hand is guiding me. It's a pretty big caddy tree there. And then just look at this environment. And it's, then when we get to the top, I'll show you what the rest of the area looks like. But it's also even in here, I'm already noticing how much more dry it looks. Yeah, not as much rain as the caddy tree forest that we were in. Yeah. Through the valley I may walk, but you were all I'll ever need. Gave you life to take my fall. So in the storm I will have peace. You a little bit out of breath? Just a little bit. Okay. You know, for people who live at sea level, any elevation is kind of breath <laughs> exerting. Are you out of breath? Yeah, we we just had a little bit of a Mexican lunch snack. Lots of spice. Yeah. Probably not the smartest thing to go <laughs> eating before you hike straight up a mountain. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. Huh, you can see our van way down there. You coming? I am coming. Give me a break. Oh, it's take you forever. I'm gonna run out of card space. Getting a, getting a shot. <sighs> Whew, man, temperature change all of a sudden. <sighs> and gnats. Wow. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay. So, this is where you really get to see the stark difference of. So here we are, the perfect vantage point to see the contrast of what New Zealand used to look like versus what it is today with the patches of forest contrasted by all of this farmland. And wow, there is a lot of farmland. Now granted, this is probably every country around the world, right? This is what we've done as humans, but it is so stark coming from where we've just been deep in the forest with all those counties. And then we get out here and it's just little tiny patches of it here and there. Ugh. Yeah, I would love to see aerial footage, not that it exists, but of back in the day before this was all colonized, what it would have been like for the Maori people to come up here and look out on all their densely forested land and then what it looks like today. Whatever you do, don't step to the side. No, this is a very important shot. It's worth risking my life for. It's a shot of the van. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? About that empty field, just you and me in time to kill the first kiss I didn't know would come. You laughing at my stupid jokes, both of us wishing we were old right then, cause we knew it was love. And everybody says take it slow, but I think it's true when you know you know. Yeah, we could be dancing all Churros and beer. Where are we? Cheers, love. Cheers. I'm not sure in a long time. All right, the glory, glory of van lifing. The cassette toilet. Lady described it like, just use it like a teapot. <laughs> okay. Ah. 
blue goo. Ugh. Mm. It smells like dirty airplane toilet mixed with porta potty. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Yep, just like a teapot. <laughs> Next up, gray water from the sink. See, why isn't the black just like that? Not want that going down that hole. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give you gloves either, so. Oh, smells good. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> Fan life. Oh, there. The thing is, everybody has gray water in switch. You just don't ever have to deal with it in a regular city dwelling, you know? So you just don't even think about it. I actually think all of this is good. It makes you so much more aware of everything. Consumption, Consumption usage. usage, how much water, definitely your sewer, what happens with that. It just makes you think about it. And otherwise you just kind of don't. It's flush and forget. So I think this is a good exercise personally. And of course we deal with all of this boat life, very similar to van life in that respect, except for the fact that we have a composting toilet, so we don't have to deal with the black tank part of things, so that's not something I miss. I'm, I really, I so much prefer the composting toilet. How about you? Composting toilet? All or... the way. Okay. On the road again. Yeah, well, it's our very last day. We are returning the camper van this afternoon. Seems like it flew by, but we could not leave without giving you a proper dump experience. So oh, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hope it was as good for you as it was for me. <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't so bad. No, it's not bad. We also rarely use the toilet because it's a cassette toilet. Yeah, best for emergencies only. Yeah. Nice little campground, huh? Yeah. Oh, that was kind of anticlimactic. I just walked in, gave my paperwork. He's like, hey, you're on Express. Thanks. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> so yeah, Express package, totally worth it. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Road, Road trip, trip is over. Yeah. Yeah. Boat work begins. Woo, baby. We got a lot of videos of boat work coming up, but we're going to break it up. It's not going to be all boat work and, and no fun. Hopefully. Nah, no, it definitely won't be. We'll do a little exploring, do a little boat work. But first, we got kind of, we got to fix the two major problems first. Then, yes, the then, hole we can, the boat then we can windows. relax a little more. Exactly. Yeah. All right. All right. See you then. Thanks. Thanks for watching, Bye. guys. Bye. I don't know where we're going. Or oh, right here. <laughs>